In the Quran, it is related that man is created in a three-stage process in the mother's womb. He creates you stage by stage in your mother's wombs in a threefold darkness. That is God, your Lord. Sovereignty is His. There is no God but Him. So what has made you deviate? As will be understood, it is pointed out in this verse that a human being is created in the mother's womb in three distinct stages. Indeed, modern biology has revealed that the baby's embryological development takes place in three distinct regions in the mother's womb. Today, in all of the embryological textbooks studied in the faculties of medicine, this subject is taken as an element of basic knowledge. For instance, in basic human embryology, a fundamental reference text in the field of embryology, this fact is stated as follows. The life in the uterus has three stages. Pre-embryonic, first two and a half weeks. Embryonic, until the end of the eighth week. And fetal, from the eighth week to labor. These phases refer to the different developmental stages of a baby. Information on the development in the mother's womb became available only after observations done with modern devices. Yet, just like many other scientific facts, these pieces of information are imparted in the verses of the Quran in a miraculous way. The fact that such detailed and accurate information was given in the Quran at a time when people had scarce information on medical matters is clear evidence that the Quran is not the word of man but the word of God. Another miraculous aspect of the Quran is that it revealed beforehand a number of important events that would occur in the future. The 27th verse of Surat al-Fat, for example, gave the believers glad tidings that they would conquer Mecca, which was then under the occupation of pagans. God has confirmed his messenger's vision with truth. You will enter the Masjid al-Haram in safety, God willing, shaving your heads and cutting your hair without any fear. He knew what you did not know and ordained, in place of this, an imminent victory. In close consideration, the verse is seen to announce yet another victory that will take place before the victory of Mecca. Indeed, as stated in the verse, the believers first conquered the Kaaba fortress, which was under the control of the Jews, and then entered Mecca. Another piece of news that the Qur'an gives about the future is found in the first verses of Surat Ar-Rum. In these verses, it is stated that the Byzantine Empire had met with a great defeat, but that it would soon gain victory. The Romans had been defeated in the land nearby, but after their defeat, they will themselves be victorious in a few years' time. The affair is God's from beginning to end. These verses were revealed around 620 CE, almost seven years after the severe defeat of Christian Byzantium at the hands of the Persians, when the Byzantines lost Jerusalem. Yet it was related in the verses that Byzantium would shortly be victorious. In fact, Byzantium had then suffered such heavy losses that it seemed impossible for it even to maintain its existence 
let alone be victorious again. Not only the Persians, but also Avars, Slavs and Lombards posed serious threats to the Byzantine Empire. The Avars had come as far as the walls of Constantinople. The Byzantine Emperor Heraclius had ordered the gold and silver in churches to be melted and turned into money in order to meet the expenses of the army. Many governors had revolted against Emperor Heraclius and the empire was on the point of collapse. Mesopotamia, Cilicia, Syria, Palestine, Egypt and Armenia, which earlier belonged to Byzantium, were invaded by the idolater Persians. In short, everyone was expecting the Byzantine Empire to be destroyed. But right at that moment, the first verses of Surat al-Rum were revealed, announcing that Byzantium would gain triumph in a few years' time. Around seven years after the revelation of the first verses of Surat al-Rum, in December 627 CE, a decisive battle between Byzantium and Persian Empire was fought at Nineveh, and this time the Byzantine army surprisingly defeated the Persians. A few months later, the Persians had to make an agreement with Byzantium, which obligated them to return the territories they had taken from them. At the end, the victory of the Romans, proclaimed by God in the Quran, miraculously came true. Another miracle revealed in these verses is the announcement of a geographical fact that could not be discovered by anyone in that period. In the third verse of Surat al-Rum, we are informed that the Romans had been defeated in the lowest region of the earth. This expression, Edna el arad in Arabic, is interpreted as a nearby place in many translations. Yet, this is not the literal meaning of the original statement, but rather a figurative interpretation of it. The word Edna in Arabic is derived from the word Deni, which means low, and Ard, which means world. Therefore, the expression Edna el Ard means the lowest place on the earth. Most interestingly, crucial stages of the war fought between the Byzantine Empire and the Persians, when the Byzantines were defeated and lost Jerusalem, had really taken place at the lowest point on earth. This specified region is the basin of the Dead Sea, which is situated at the intersection point of the lands belonging to Syria, Palestine and Jordan. The Dead Sea, lying at 395 meters below sea level, is the lowest region of the earth. This means that the Byzantines were defeated at the lowest part of the world, just as is stated in the verse. The most interesting point lies in the fact that the altitude of the Dead Sea could only be measured with modern measurement techniques. Before that, it was impossible for anyone to know that it was the lowest region on the surface of the Earth. Yet, this region was stated to be the lowest point on the Earth in the Qur'an. Hence, this provides another evidence that the Qur'an is divine revelation.